coming up in today's episode. You just murdered it. He said, do we have to have the same problems two or three times? I don't think we do. <laughs> was, well, this leads uh, into my, my next one. You want to hear my next low point? Yes. Welcome to episode 87 of Enter the Mind podcast, the most real talk, no nonsense podcast on the empowering of the mind. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about learning from low points, low points in our lives. Before we get to that, Kira, how are you this week? Yeah, I'm actually, I'm going to ladies night tonight, having happy hour cocktails. So I'm really excited about that. Heading down to Miami after the podcast. How are you? That's dope. I am good. I'm on a new business schedule, you know, since I work on my business outside of the nine to five and I have different hours like set aside for different tasks. And maybe that sounds kind of boring or overly structured, but I think I do well on structure. So there we go. Structure for the win. I love that. No, I like that. I like the specific times and like time windows and shit. Totally. We'll see what results we get. Reality is the ultimate judge and jury. So there we go. All right. So let's get into it. Um, today's topic is learning from our low points. Would you like to start us off with an example? Yeah. Yeah. It's, so I immediately thought of my accident and when I got my toes cut off by a lawnmower. And what but age was that again? That was at six. Wow. Yes, and I'm 25 now. Oh my God. So it's, it's, I'm coming up on uh, 20 years. Wow. They told me that I would never be able to walk again without like intense physical therapy. Like, in, like even going through intense physical therapy, I would still never really be able to walk like correctly again. Wow. And I remember I was sitting in my bed and I had my little walker and I still had like my foot all wrapped up and I still had the stitches in. Um, I still had my cast and everything and nobody was there to take me to the bathroom. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? I have to go to the bathroom? Fuck y'all. I ignored, you know, everybody else and I got up and I laid some pillows on the ground. I was like, I can fucking do this. So I laid some pillows on the ground and I walked to the bathroom. So then I laid some more pillows out and I walked out into the living room and my mom looks up from her phone and she's, uh, she's on the phone with my dad. She goes, Oh, Kira's just walking. <laughs> and then, and then she, she like puts down the phone and she's like, Kira's walking, you know? So I had taught myself to walk again and I actually never went to physical therapy after that. I'm a runner, I'm a sprinter, I still do gymnastics. I'm actually learning to be able to balance only like solely on my right foot, like during yoga to do those like hard yoga poses and stuff. So it's a really, it, it was a tough situation. You know, I was debilitated. I was relying on other people to do things for me. And in that situation, my brain ticked and I cared about nothing else more than doing what was fucking right for me when doing what I wanted. So, you know, I ignored everything that I heard the doctor saying. I ignored everything that my mom was saying that I need to rest that I can't put pressure on it, etc. And I said, I don't give a fuck what you people tell me that I can't do because I'm pretty sure in my mind that I can. And you know what? It really doesn't hurt when I walk. That is one example of how you know, some of the darkest and toughest moments in your life can lead to one of your biggest victories. That's one of my biggest victories. I did something that the, that the trained doctors told me I couldn't do. <laughs> Was it also a victory in the sense that like you learned what you were capable of? Yes, because it's actually something that's carried with me throughout my entire life. It's kind of like a pattern. I get into these well, I don't anymore, but I used to get into these crazy, crazy situations. And like, even now, when I think about like what I'm capable of, I'm like, dude, I did this, 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 and this. Those are some of the hardest situations in my life. Yes, I am 100% capable of pulling through with whatever minuscule task this is. <laughs> uh, I see. So you use the memory of, of overcoming that thing to gain perspective later 
when you face other obstacles. And then you also use it as a reminder of your abilities, right? Yes. I love that you played it back. I get that. Yeah, totally. Because it's such a, you know, setback or it's something that a lot of people would perceive as a total setback. But that's really cool how you use that to your advantage, basically, right? <laughs> yeah, I definitely do. Yeah. So do you have any stories that you'd like to share about one of your toughest moments? And today it's become one of your greatest victories? Well, I don't know if I would call it a victory, but for sure it was uh, a difficult time for me, I think was the summer right after I graduated high school. And it was difficult because I didn't have any structure. And so I was planning to work as a math tutor because that's what I did the, the previous summer. But I applied late and they already filled all of the vacancies. So they uh, told me they didn't need any additional tutors. I said, okay, fine. And that summer, I basically just sat around the house, like just not doing anything. And this was back when I was like even more introverted. So I wasn't out seeing friends. I was just staying at home. And my sleep schedule just got really weird to the point where I was staying awake all night long until 5 a.m. watching you know, untold stories of the emergency room, uh, watching all these, you know, surgeries gone wrong, uh, TV shows and, <laughs> and just being like addicted to that. But it was very empty. And I remember writing these journal entries, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, life is meaningless. I was getting into philosophy and existentialism. And I was all like, well, there's no meaning on earth. We're just here temporarily. Human beings are just born and they die. So what I learned from that summer was basically I learned psychology that summer. I learned how the mind works. I, I learned that as human beings, as the most intelligent species on the planet, we don't function well sitting around doing nothing. We need goals. We need structure. We need engagement socially. We need engagement in tasks. We need immediate feedback, which is why people enjoy sports so much, both watching it and playing it because you get immediate feedback either the ball went in the hoop or it didn't and then you try again and you take another shot and it's just and so the human mind and watch any toddler newborn baby newborn babies constantly touching things picking this up figuring out like what is this world that i live in and that's what the human being is and we're not meant to just be completely in our in our brains all the time thinking what's the meaning of life and this philosophy and these concepts and everything people ignore that especially intellectual people because intellectual people get praised for doing well in school and for being smart and so the byproduct of that is or the side effect if you will is that they begin to get their self-esteem from their mind and so what does that mean? It means they stop doing sports, they stop dancing, they stop doing all these physical things because they're not being praised for them. But they are being praised for, oh yeah, you're so smart, you scored well on the test, you got an A+. And so they enter a self-esteem cycle where they're getting all of these self-esteem rewards for all these behaviors and then that in turn creates their personality. So personality is a complete, in a way, personality is much more moldable than we think it is and people really just go down certain roads in life because their environment is rewarding them for going down those roads first of all i have to say i even wrote this down on my hand because i was like i don't have a piece of paper and i need to say this it's fucking crazy that like you signed up late like you applied too late and the position had already been filled because god was like mm-mm Mm -mm, it's time for you to learn psychology. <laughs> so I fucking, I love the way that that poured out for you. And it's so amazing to see you here today as who you are going through that sort of missed opportunity, but then turned into something that you would be doing as a career, something that you're passionate about for the rest of your life. So that is amazing. And then I loved what you said about 
oh my god, like the the people who are praised for being smart. That's ki I feel like that's kind of like those New York bro dudes who are like in finance and things like that. Like they're so praised for like what they can do like mentally, but sometimes inside they can be really cold and like uncaring. It's why? Because they were praised for their mind. That's, oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating that. That's some food for thought, right? But yes. no, for for real though, I think like when it comes to like self evolution or per personal evolution for us, for the human being, like number one on the list is like dropping the ego or like stopping or ceasing to be a slave to the ego, because we chase ego validation almost more than we chase good tasting food, like fats and sugars and th that are not good for us like we get so hungry for that validation from the outside and for that praise and for me like lesson number one being a human being is like dropping that ego and realizing like hey i don't need that stuff i know who i am i know what i want i know my values and i don't need a bunch of people to tell me good job on this or you are great you matter because I'm here, I set the rules of my life, and I'm not going to be steered one direction or the other just because other people clap when I do certain things. Then I become a monkey on a stage. But let's hear, do you have another example of, of another low point? I do. I do. And it's, it's so super interesting. I love when I think about like these hard times in my life that have really become my gold in my life, like something that like, I'm like, holy fuck, I am so fucking powerful. And it was when I, when I got off drugs and it was that crushing moment. And it was like those moments, those days adding up. And one night it was just like, so fucking bad. Like my mind was so out of fucking place. And like my life was so fucking miserable. One of the toughest fucking decisions and moments in my life was leaving everything, everything where I was staying. I left like thousands of dollars worth of shoes, clothes, material items and shit. And I got on a plane, I left, I blocked their numbers, I blocked everyone's numbers, I deleted all my Instagram, I fell off the face of the fucking earth, and I healed myself. And I healed myself through the pure desire to be more, to have more, to do more in this lifetime. So when I got off drugs, I opened the book, The Secret. And my life has never been the same, ever. I swear on everything I love. The moment that I opened up that book, something ticked in my brain and it will never go back to the way it was. And so you know, those times of like doing drugs, they were the toughest times in my life. That moment when you left, I guess it was the circle of friends that you were with or the people you were living with, you just, was it that you realized like, hey, I want more for myself, like I'm doing this good thing? Or were you like more just fed up and upset so much? Like this is not working. I don't know where I'm going, but I just need to get out of here. It was more like I knew everything that I was supposed to become. Like I just, I knew I was meant to be so fucking big. Like there was nothing or no one that could tell me different. And I was like, I don't know what's going on here, but I've been trying for years with this same person, like to shoot my life off and nothing has been happening that is beneficial for me. So I was like, I have to leave whatever this is behind because something is calling me so fucking deep down and I'm supposed to be really big and I'm not gonna let y'all hold me back. Wow, so yeah. is it hard to physically, like, cause I know there's like withdrawal symptoms and whatnot from drugs. Was it hard? to stay off of them once you d made that decision? No. <laughs> Honestly, no. I was so fucking happy that I quit. I was like, oh, thank God, I hated those things. 
<laughs> so, so yeah, um, it definitely wasn't hard for me at all. Hmm. And so the big takeaway there was while you were in that lifestyle, it was not a good experience. Life was not good, but you used that as a jumping platform and sounds like that was one of the reasons why you read The Secret, which changed your life. Is that why you consider this something that you learned from? It catapulted you into a better lifestyle? Oh yeah, and that's why I liked your story as well so much about kind of like missing that big opportunity that you really wanted to do, you know, be a math tutor, and it didn't work out, you know, so you wound up learning this actually really important lesson about, you know, turning your downside into gold. Right. I think there's always learning today. I'm looking forward to see what can I learn from. And I think that mindset helps because there's always going to be problems. It's just different types of problems. You know, like that summer I had a problem with motivation and this problem of the meaning of life bothering me, thinking like life is all sad and meaningless, right? That is not a problem for me anymore. I am now 34. I'm not 18 anymore. And that problem is not a problem. And to me, that's personal evolution. That's, the, that's growth. Where do I have problems today? Of course I have problems today. And I combat them with solutions. So we're never going to be without problems. It's just the process of evolution means you don't have the same problem over and over again, two times, three times, four times. Why? Because, again, human beings, we are the smartest species on planet Earth. The things that we create for ourselves is just off the charts. Creating a vaccine for coronavirus, like, like can any other animal do that? Why do we need to have the same problems twice and three times? I don't think we do. <sighs> Fuck, you just murdered it. He said, do we have to have the same problems two or three times? I don't think we do. <laughs> was, well, this leads uh, into my, my next one. You want to hear my next low point, right? Yes. No, this is related to social dynamics, okay? So back when I was living in Chicago, this is after college. So maybe I was in my early to mid twenties, right? There was this girl that I liked and she was in like a philosophy class with me. And I was through texting. I was like asking her out and she was like, oh, not, not this week or something like that. And I kept asking, I kept asking. Finally, after like three asks or whatever, she sent me a very rude message right? And I'm not going to recite exactly what it said, but it was like a very rude message. And that was very hurtful, right? Yeah. Now, this is me coming out of two long-term relationships. Well, I had one girlfriend for seven months and then another girlfriend for five years or four and a half years, yeah. right? That was the extent of my dating life. Like I was an introvert. I never went to parties. I didn't like them. They were just too loud. And, you know, I just didn't know how to start conversations with people. So my social skills, I admit, were like not as developed as, as they could have been, right? That to me was like, we talk about pain points and motivation. You always got to use those pain points. Like I get excited about pain points right now because if you're like trying to become fit and then, I don't know, you go to the beach and you're just so embarrassed because you want to look better and you think you don't look that good like that pain point like hell yeah use that like because that is going to fuel your mission for the next six months i feel like it's somebody handing me a gallon of gasoline to put in my car because that's what we need that we need that drive we need that passion because the mind is lazy it's like people if you don't have that fuel you're just going to sit around. Anyways, back to my story, right? So this girl sends me this rude message, right? I'm like 20, let's say I'm like 24 years old. I've had two relationships in my life, right? The vast majority of my knowledge of dating and women and how to interact comes from movies, which as I've told you before in other podcasts, 
are very, very out of touch with reality. You have some like extreme low value main character who's shy and a nerd and he goes up to the beautiful woman and he acts all nice and honest and she's like, yeah, I'll go out with you. <laughs> Whereas the popular quarterback of the football team who's mean and a bully, he loses at the end of the movie and his life sucks, right? That's not real life. And so movies teach men that they can be low value and still have a successful like dating life. And it's not true. So long story short, <laughs> I launched into several years of, of just really studying like the male female dynamic and working on my confidence, working on my social skills, going out to parties when I didn't want to and forcing myself to talk to strangers and start conversations. And was that fun? Like not really, but I don't see why a human being would not want to conquer that part of their life. Like, do you want to stay at home scared and watch TV for the rest of your life? No, like you want to meet people, you want to have conversations and, and sure you can be an introvert. Maybe you don't need to be super spontaneous and like go to crazy musical festivals like Coachella and do a bunch of wild things. Like I, I love people who do that. It's awesome. But <laughs> It's like, I understand that not everybody is th that way. And some people like me just want to be in a quiet room and read a book. However, a lot of times we want to be with another person in that quiet room reading a book. <laughs> and so the main point there is like that negative experience, really, I just call it the gallon of gasoline. Sometimes we need that fuel to like push forward and to really enter a next stage in our life. It's just like a rocket ship escaping gravity. Like you need a lot of fuel to overcome these psychological forces that hold you down to earth. Really interesting because I can actually see it going into my workout routine as well. I have some days where I just shove everything in my mouth as opposed to my days where I'm really like I, you know, I drink a shake, I have a nice small lunch, I have a nice small dinner, but like not small, you know, I eat. But, um, you know, there are days when I eat a lot more. And then I was actually just talking to somebody about it the other day, how like when we eat much more, it makes that fucking run. Like I have so much fuel for my run. I have so much energy to like burn my abs and my thighs and shit. So like it's dope. I was talking to somebody else the other day and... I was saying to them like how I really hope it hurts for this person. And they were like, oh damn, like that's kind of fucked up. And I was like, no, but I really, I really mean it though. And there's this song by Madison Beer that I love and it's called Hurts Like Hell. And I feel like the way that she means it is definitely a little different, but I don't know. But I, when I sing it, I'm like, I really hope it hurts like hell for you. I hope that this hurts for you. Because what are you gonna do now? You know, you just lost the girl of your dreams because you couldn't get your shit together. I hope that this hurts for you, you know, so you can learn from it and you can take that and you can put it into gold. And I say the same thing from my for myself, you know, like Kira, like I really, really hope that this hurts for you. Like I hope that this hurts because this is something that matters to you and you need to move forward from this. So feel that pain, feel what you lost, feel that you have lost this battle <laughs> because, you know, you need to move forward on the next one because you wouldn't yeah. be, you wouldn't be so upset if it didn't mean so much to you. It's so beautiful. And I think that this comes as a result of seeing the bigger perspective and the deeper perspective, which is that life is energy in our universe is energy and when you see this negative event or you feel the pain that should be seen as energy as potential energy and that immediately will help reframe the situation because the average mindset will view that as oh you're experiencing pain oh this is not good oh no like what can we do to make it better right no 
what can we do to make the pain worse <laughs> so that <laughs> so that i can fill up my canister with even more gasoline because this little tank here that i'm filling up this is going to fuel me for the next year this is going to make me get up at 5 a.m every day and go out and crush it this is going to make me be willing to if i'm in sales for instance hear no after no after no and keep persisting until i hear that yes right mm -hmm. that takes fuel it takes fuel and energy to get things done and energy is that's the the true resource that we need not comfort comfort is the the target that we're mistaken about that's what everybody looks for but the true target that we need to be after is energy i definitely love that we're touching base on energy right now because i feel like when we go back into those really tough times like also that really gives me energy you know because it's like holy fuck my life And then I take that, I eat it, and I look at myself currently today, and I'm like, holy wow, I am amazing. Like, I can't even, like, am I really here? But, like, I do know that I'm here. But, like, it's, it's amazing, you know? And I feel like when you don't have any pain in your life, instead of kind of, like, self-sabotaging and creating that pain, go back visit your past, visit a past pain, and then that's going to give you that energy. That's going to give you that experience of winning, of overcoming something tremendously big. And you're going to get that in your energy and you're going to be like, wow. Let's get into a power question of the day, getting close to the end time here. So write down some of your toughest, toughest, toughest times in your life. You know, so and I, like I'm not saying that like the less tough times are like any less important, but like really the ones that like you're feeling called to write down, write down those toughest times and write down how you got through them and write down like what you built out of it. Like how, who did you become because of this and what sort of magic, not quote unquote magic because we do have magic, but what magic part inside of you came out that still sticks with you today? So like for my accident, you know, what I got from it was that I'm a motherfucking warrior and nobody can ever tell me what to do ever. And, you know, for my drug one, you know, it turned me into a person who is a little bit more cautious about who I let into my life, a lot more cautious about who I let into my life, a lot more cautious about what I put into my body, my mind, etc. So, you know, and it also showed that I'm a motherfucking savage once again, because I quit cold turkey and didn't even miss the bitches. So, um, you know, that's what, what these events turned me into. What did yours turn you into? How can you take that, that awesome, resilient warrior energy and feed it to yourself today to give you the fuel that you need to move forward? into a beautiful and quality life that's some pure gold right there nice. uh on that high note i think let's uh end for the day thank you all for watching and listening we'll see you all next week in the next episode of enter the mind did you find at least one gold nugget in today's episode then please like and subscribe and share it with a friend and finally if you're looking for a community of like-minded people join our free facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash enter the mind